Hello, everyone. My name is Ali Feldberg. I am an assistant professor here at HBS. Today, I'm going to be talking about work that I call the task bind, gender differences in managerial tasks and performance. So the research question that I'm going to ask today is, how do negative stereotypes influence how women compared to men take up and perform in managerial roles? And the main contribution of the study that I'm going to talk about today is to identify a new way that stereotypes, and specifically stereotype threat, can actually undermine women's ability to be effective managers. And so I'm going to introduce a concept today that I call the task bind. Um, and this is what's coming out of the work. It's kind of, if you remember anything from this presentation, I hope you remember task bind. So a task bind is what women managers face is they try to disprove a negative stereotype by doubling down on one set of tasks. The thing is, though, in any given job, there's probably lots of different tasks. And so time spent on one set of tasks actually comes at the expense of time spent on other tasks. Now, the context that I study, and people who have seen me present from this work before will know I am obsessed with this context. It's a grocery chain. Um, I really like produce, it turns out. Um, so it's a brick and mortar chain. It has about 100 stores and around 8,000 people at any given point. Think of your conventional, kind of traditional supermarket. So you know, there's a deli department, a bakery, a meat, a grocery, and a produce department. It's kind of the place around the corner. So, my research design mixes methods, so I started by developing hypotheses from qualitative data. So I interview people, I observe people in stores, and then I got archival data from the company and I tested the hypotheses I developed qualitatively uh, with the quantitative data. Now my field work really showed me two main spaces in these grocery stores. The first space is the floor. This is you know, this is where you buy things. It's probably what you as a consumer are most familiar with. It's where you interact with employees. If you're anything like me, it's where you spill things or break things. Um, and then there's the office. The office is a room, it's a space that's set off from the floor. Um, and you can see that picture here. It's sort of a small space. You can't see the floor from the office. There's a computer usually in these rooms. And it's a space used almost exclusively by managers. Now, these two spaces corresponded with two main sets of activities. So uh, on the floor, that's really where managers were handling products, they were assisting customers, and this is also where they were monitoring the people that they oversaw their subordinates. In the office, this is where they entered data, they do planning and analytical tasks. And there was another key difference that came out from my research between these two spaces. So when they were on the floor, this is where managers were doing tasks in front of their subordinates. When they were in the office, they did their tasks away from their subordinates. So this is, they were not able to see or be seen by the people that they managed when they were in the office. I also noticed something from my field work, which is that women and men tended to talk about tasks differently. So women were actually particularly attuned to the fact that when they were in the floor, they were not in the office. And when they were in the office, they were not in the floor. So they were really aware of this trade-off between the spaces. And in stark contrast, men really didn't talk about this trade-off. I want to give you an example of what, what this looked like. So let's take Brenda here. Um, Brenda was a manager of a meat department. She's a little bit unusual in that in meat departments, these are dominated by men and male-typed work in, in this context. So she's you know, not prototypical in this setting. When she's in the office and she's you know, working on the books, she thinks to herself, oh gosh, I haven't, I haven't spent enough time on the floor. I, I need to you know, show that I can do this job of cutting the meat to, to the people that are reporting into me. And so she hustles out onto the floor. And when she gets to the floor, she then starts thinking about all of the stuff that she has left to do in the office, because she still has a bunch of tasks to do there. And so being on the floor was important in women's accounts because it was an opportunity to demonstrate and to signal to the people that they managed that they were capable and competent in the domains in which they were stereotyped as not being capable or not being competent. And this is really the crux of this, and this gets back to this task find, and this is the key insight of this research, what I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation. So the task find, again, it's a dilemma that managers face as they try to disprove a negative stereotype by doubling down on one set of tasks at the expense of other essential tasks. Now, the task find wasn't just stressful. Ideally, bona fide job demands determine what people are doing every single day. But in reality, it was perceived pressures that partially determined the tasks people were doing. So what I found was that the women were 
over-indexing on these tasks that they felt like they really needed to prove themselves in. I mentioned uh, well, a few slides ago that this is a mixed methods research, so I learned all of this from interviews, and that's one, one perspective. I got people's subjective experiences from the conversations I had. So then I turned to my quantitative data to see how the patterns that I heard about played out every day. So my quantitative data showed that women, in fact, did do fewer tasks in the office than men. And what was particularly germane to my theory, and actually really relevant to what Julia was just talking about, is that the women who did the fewest tasks in the office were those who worked in male-type departments and had no women peers. So we should imagine that these people would be the ones who might be most likely to feel stereotype threat in really acute ways. Unsurprisingly, planning was associated with performance. In this case, it was profitability. And so if we put everything together, women did less planning because they, they privileged floor tasks where they felt they could disprove negative stereotypes. But going to the office less actually detracted from the performance of women managers' departments. And this is really the task bind. So in close, I think there are a few contributions I'll just highlight of this research. First is that this, is, this research shows how internalizing a stereotype threat can affect the performance of people in organizations. And to my knowledge, this is the first research to really demonstrate this phenomenon in the field among managers um, and show organizational consequences of this threat. I think I talked about gender here today. I talked about a grocery chain. I think that this idea of a task bind extends far beyond this particular social identity and I think to contexts well beyond grocery. And then I think I didn't get too much into this today, but I think the research also does point to some opportunities for organizations to intervene. Thank you so much.